Well, it's such a joy to come into your home today or wherever you're viewing the program. You know, it's, it's wonderful that we can reach out to hurting people, needy people, people who desire to be taught the Word of God uh, by, by means of television. It's a miracle that we can come or we preach here and be right there with you with the Word of God. And our desire is to help you understand what rights and privileges you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to be talking about the power of words, the confession of the Word of God. You know, Dodie, that's meant a lot in our lives, hasn't it? That's right, John. You know, the Bible says that we're snared by the words of our mouth, and life and death are in the power of the tongue. And then there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, put your hand over your mouth, you know, if you've thought evil or if you think evil. That's right. There are lots of times in my life when I wish I'd have put my hand over my mouth instead of saying things. Because, uh, you know, words can put men on their feet. That's right. Words can either make you or break you. And it's really important what comes out of our mouth. And I hope everybody will listen because they'll get a lot out of what you're going to say. You know, it was, uh, it was uh, one of the friends of Job that says, thy words have put men on their feet. Job was a man who spoke good words. Words can knock you down, pull you down, or put you on your feet. And not just the words of others, you know, it's what you speak yourself. That's right. That's right. And uh, you make a habit every day of speaking the Word of God, don't you? I do. I read my healing scriptures every day of the world. I don't leave our home till I read them. And, uh, and a lot of times as I read them, I confess them. I confess them, you know, when I'm walking without even my inner man it confesses the Word of God when I'm walking, when I don't even realize it. See, I'm meditating on the Word of God, and uh, I've needed that you through know, the years. You know, Dodie, a lot of people don't realize what confession means. Confession means to say the same thing or to agree. So when we say confess the Word of God, it means that we are saying the same thing that God says. Amen. And uh, that we agree with God. Now, I didn't understand that for a long time. You know, if you're sick, for instance, you don't say, I don't hurt, I don't have any symptoms, the doctor's report is wrong. All of those are facts. We don't deny uh, the existence of sickness. We just read in the Bible what God says about healing, and we just simply say, I agree with God. I, I, I'm going to say what God says. Amen. And uh, that turns things around. That's right. And John, remember back in 1981 when they said I was going to die with liver cancer, I found this scripture. I found the place where it was written. In fact, I found 40 scriptures on healing. That's what you need to do if you need something from God. Find something in the Bible where it's written. Keep your mind on it, your heart on it, your eyes on it. Don't let it depart from your eyes, Proverbs 4, 20. But anyway, I got this scripture, Jeremiah 30, 17, that says, I will restore health unto you and heal you of your wounds. And I confess that, John. I'd find myself confessing it in the middle of the night. I'd wake up saying, Father, I thank you for restoring health unto me. It didn't seem like health was restored unto me. I seemed like I was sick unto death. But I kept on saying it and kept on saying it, plus a lot of other ones. And you know, it worked, John. Now, if I would have said, and I said another one, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. If I had changed it and said, well, I'm going to die, that's no doubt about it. The doctors have said so. I would have probably been gone fast. Well, that's true. And, and through, through our mouth, we can rise to a level uh, of health and prosperity. And, and uh, you know, people do not realize the, the power of their words. I'm going to talk about that today. It's so important that you get your Bible and just stay with us because uh, we don't have any desire to do anything except help you as we teach the Word of God and preach. You know, I'm not just teaching. I like to preach the Word of God, herald the Word of God. You're going to get help. I want us to go live into the service now, and you get ready to get really blessed and helped with the Word of God. We're so glad that you have joined us in the television audience. Get your Bible and open it to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We're going to begin to read with verse 19. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? He answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who are you? Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as said the prophet Isaiah. I want to talk to you today on that question, 
What sayest thou of thyself? This is a message about the value of confession. You know our words can either make us or break us. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. I teach this congregation here at Lakewood Church, as I'm doing now, and I want to teach you in the television audience the value of your words. Now I want you to draw a little circle around yourself here, and I want you to say mentally inside of you, Brother Osteen is talking to me. What sayest thou of thyself? What is your basic attitude? What is your self-image? What do you say and what do you think about yourself? It's not arrogance. It's not pride. It's not stupidity. It is just simply agreeing with God. To confess means to say the same thing or to agree. Did you know that God created the world with words? He said, let there be, and there was. He said, let there be, and there was. He said, let there be, and there was. God created with words, and he spoke the world into existence. I'm going to tell you something today that can change the whole course of your life. Did you know that as soon as God created the world with words, he said, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, God said, let us. You see, the first, the first word for God is Elohim, which is a plural unity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now listen to what the li living Bible says. And God said, let us make a man. Somebody just like us and let them be masters of all of life faith words this god said as father son and holy ghost came together now that we have demonstrated what words can do let us make a man and a woman somebody just like us i'm telling you you didn't come from a monkey you didn't come from an ape you didn't come from a little bit of slime that crawled out on the earth and began to develop. No, you are made just like God. God said to his son, to the Holy Ghost, let us make a man, a woman, somebody just like us, and let us give him dominion. And let them be masters of all of life. God's ideal for you is that you might master all of life. Master your marriage. Master your finances. Master uh, your problems in life. You are a master. You are made in the image of Almighty God. But the thing God impressed upon me is I want to make them men and women who can create with words. Now that's what Jesus talked about. Have the faith of God. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. You see, Jesus is talking about the creatures created in the image of God who creates with words. Do you know you, you can dig your grave with your mouth? The power of death and life are in the tongue. All of your situation right now is a product of how you've been talking. You talk down, you'll go down. You talk defeat, you'll be defeated. You talk lack, you'll have lack. You talk, de de talk depression, you'll have depression. But if you'll talk blessing and glory and victory, you'll have it. Somebody said, now, Brother Osteen, that's mind over matter. That's Christian science. No, it's not mind over matter. And it's not Christian science. It's Bible. We don't deny sickness. We don't deny poverty. We don't deny symptoms. We don't deny uh, the, the cancer is there or the lack is there. We just place the word of God against it and say what God says. We're the only creature that can talk. We're made in the image of God. 
God said, I made the world in six days, and I'm going to make somebody just like myself, and he made us. Did you know the Bible says, I create the fruit of the lips? What are you saying about your children? What are you saying about your business? What are you saying about your marriage? What are you saying about that situation? What are you saying? You create havoc or you can create peace with your mouth. Somebody said, oh, I don't, I'm not going to worry about that. Because you see, I've always been poor. My family's been poor. And we all have cancer in our, in our lives and heart troubles in our, in our family and all of that. And, and you know, it, it's just always my children never amount to anything and all of that. Let me tell you something. There's a law working. You better be careful because you're creating the very thing you're talking about. Will you say, Brother Osteen, I'm not going to lie about it. If I'm sick, I'm sick. If I'm weak, I'm weak. If I'm in debt, I'm in debt. I don't want you to lie about it. Just read what God's Word says and agree with God. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say. He didn't say, I'm not weak. Let the weak say. What shall the weak say? He didn't say, let the weak pray. It's all right to pray. But I'm telling you, there's a time to say and not pray. You can wear your carpet out until you get carbuncles on your knees and never get anything from God until you learn to use your mouth and agree with God. Yeah. You see, let, let a person say on the basis of God's word just the opposite of the problem. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the sick say, I'm healed. What do you say, Brother Osteen? The doctor says, I'm sick. My body says I'm sick. Well, the Bible says by his stripes you're healed. So you just agree with God. You don't deny the doctor's report. You don't deny the, that the symptoms are there. You just agree with God. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the sick say I'm healed. Let those in debt say I'm prosperous. Let the defeated say I'm more than a conqueror. Let those who are surrounded by all kind of enemies say, Greater is he that's in me and he that's in the world. I say the greater one is in me. I say the greater one lives in me. He's greater than the devil. He's greater than demons. He's greater than cancer. He's greater than heart trouble. He's greater than death. He's greater than, than all of the works of the devil. He is the greater one. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, I create the fruit of your lips. Whatever you speak, whatever you confess, I'm going to create that. Words have the power to create. You get in a house where a man and wife's fussing, man, you can feel a creation of, of an atmosphere there. Did you ever have, ever have an argument with your wife or your husband? Listen, you can't live with somebody like Dodie and never have an argument. <laughs> now, Dodie and I, you know, we're still together after 34 years. We're going to stay together. We're stuck. I mean, uh, somebody said, have you ever thought about divorce? No, we haven't thought about divorce. We thought about murder. <laughs> and you have too. <laughs> but now, the, the, the crux of the message now, in the next few minutes, uh, I want to talk about the confession that you have about yourself. Well, you know, I'm just a weak worm of the dust. You know, I, I just never will amount to anything. I don't have any education. I'm not very tall, like Brother Osteen. You know, I'm not good looking. You know, I have blemishes on my face. And, you know, of our family is poor. And, and uh, you know, I never will get out of debt. And, you know, I'm just barely... You know, if you talk like that about yourself, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. He asked John the Baptist, What sayest thou of thyself? Now, here's a very important point. If you miss this, you're going to miss all the, the very center and heart of the message. Do you know what John the Baptist said? He did not say what his body felt. He did not say what his mind felt. He did not say what his appetite said. You know, he wore camel's hair. 
That's what he said. He ate locusts and wild honey. You know, if they said, what sayest say thou thyself? He could have said many things. He could have said, well, this camel's hair sure isn't comfortable. And have you ever tasted locusts lately? <laughs> oh, they're terrible. The, the bear's got all the honey. It's terrible to be out here in this desert. No, he could have said a lot of things. But you know what he did? Now, listen very carefully. He had read in Isaiah 40, and God had quickened it to him, uh, that it applied to him. He confined his answer. Now, listen. This will change your life. He confined his answer to that question, what sayest thou thyself? He confined his answer not to how he felt, not to the situation, not to his circumstances, not to his mind, but to simply what God's word said about him. Isaiah 40 said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And God had said to John the Baptist, You are the forerunner of the Messiah. You are that voice. You are that one crying in the wilderness. So when they came to him and said, What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I agree with God. I agree with God. I am the voice. I am the voice. I am the voice of Isaiah 40. I'll say no more. Subtract nothing from it. Add nothing to it. I am what God says I am. So what about you? And what about me? We're in the new covenant. Well, let me give you some pictures that God has of you and me. I'll make it my confession and you can make it yours. I am what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says I am. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Doubt that the stars make their stately march across the heavens, and the moon gives its barred light. But don't you ever doubt this, that if you're born again, you are a new creature. When somebody comes to you and says, well, uh, what do you say about yourself religiously? Well, you know, I try to go to church once in a while. You know, I, I, uh, I slip down and fall a lot. I, I hope to go to heaven. I'm working hard at it. Uh, you know, I join such and such a church, and I'm a member there. And I go, you know, just often and do religious things. You know, that's weak. That, God didn't say anything about that. Not a thing in the world. What does God say about you? To confess the word means to say the same thing. God said, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repented, turned your back on, your, on the world, the flesh, and the devil, and took him as your Lord and Savior, he said, you are a new creature. Your spirit man is born again. The devil comes around and says, well, do you remember how you used to live? You used to be a harlot. You used to be a gambler. You used to be a gangster. You killed this one. You done that. You stolen so and so. No, if you know the Bible, you can look at the devil and say, devil... I know that's not God, because God said, he, he said, my sins and iniquities, he'd remember no more forever. But I want you to know, devil, that when I accepted Jesus, I got a new start with a new heart. I got a new birth certificate. All the old has passed away. I'm no longer what I used to be. I am a child of God. You see, this is going to shake you to your foundations. You people sitting right here in Lakewood Church. And it's going to shake you out of defeat and the morass of, of depression, you who are watching by television. God says about you that you are delivered from the power of darkness, the power of the devil, and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Listen to me. Are you going to agree with your mind with the devil and demons, or are you going to agree with God? God said you're a new creature. God said you are delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You have been delivered out of the dark dominion of Satan's kingdom. Not going to be. You are. You are now. Somebody said, oh, somebody's put a hex on me. Somebody's put a, a curse on me. Witchcraft, witchcraft. Oh, curses, curses. No, I'm telling you, you have been delivered. You have been delivered. You have been delivered. You have been delivered. If you belong to Jesus Christ, you have been delivered. It'll never do you any good until you rise up and walk out of that situation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, you could owe a million dollars somewhere. 
And uh, I could come along and pay it for you and you not know it. You'd never rejoice in it until you knew it. But you're out of debt and don't know it. Yeah, you're out of debt and don't know it because somebody paid your debt. Well, I want you to know Jesus went down in the bowels of, uh, of hell and, and, and suffered for us and then rose up and went in the re region where Satan rules in that second heaven and he defeated him, took from him the keys of death and hell and took the crown and gave us his name. He has pulled us out of darkness, called us out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's where we are, delivered from his power. My confession is I am what Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says I am. It says Christ hath redeemed me from the curse of the law. The curse of the law is spiritual death. The curse of the law is poverty, misery, breakup of homes, losing of children, all kind of sickness and disease and misery. It's all there. Whatever brings havoc and misery, I am glad to say Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Oh, say it out loud, I'm blessed and cannot be cursed. Thank God it's true. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my basket. I'm blessed in my store. I'm blessed whatever I set my hand to I is blessed. God has made me the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath. I may not feel like it. I may not look like it. But I am blessed. Hallelujah. I didn't say you, it looked like you were blessed. I didn't say that you uh, everything was rosy around you and it doesn't look like you're, uh, you know, not redeemed from the curse and all of that. It doesn't matter what life says. It doesn't matter what the situation says. It doesn't matter what man says. Your body says. Your mind says. God is always right. Yeah. Now sit up straight and let's make a confession and you folks out there say it with us. Say I boldly confess. I, boldly confess. I agree with God. It may not feel like it. It may not look like it. But I agree with God. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. He is my Lord and Savior. And I'm a new creature. I am delivered from the power of darkness. I am translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am blessed and cannot be cursed. Satan, take your hands off of me. I command you. I know the truth. You will not dominate me. I'll dominate you in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off of me and my family and my money. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a hand clap.